you doing everybody welcome to bass talk here on this wednesday night it is freak bass good to be with you here and uh thanks for tuning in every wednesday um we are here every wednesday night 9 p.m eastern time uh obviously right here at the uh the freak bass facebook page and um if you miss this broadcast obviously you can obviously scroll down in your feed but we always want to thank the amazing people at Bass Musician Magazine who also get it out there too as well to some people um, each week. So so thank you to them. Thank you to you for being here. Uh, just real quickly, I want to make sure I also mention, make sure you also tune in and join me every Saturday night, Saturday night, 9 p.m. Eastern time for Saturday night chit chat. Uh, me and another musician uh, talking uh, talking shop, basically. It's a fun time. This week, we have the amazing Mr. Another Bass Player. Uh, we have so many bass players on the show. Don't know why that could be. Um, but we have Mr. Uh, ben Carey is going to be joining me from Pigeons Playing Ping Pong. So uh, an amazing band, amazing bass player. i uh, got some really great upcoming guests. We're going to have Corey Wong on. Wolfpack is coming up. And also... You bass players out there, make sure you mark this in your calendar in a few weeks. We're gonna, I'm, uh, I just confirmed this fairly recently. The amazing Mr. Billy Sheehan is going to be joining me on Saturday Night Chit Chat. But maybe I'll do a little clip of that and put that on here on Wednesday Night Bass Talk too. But um, so for this week, um, I wanted to, one thing that I haven't really talked to too much about, um, you know, is... Um, hand exercises for both strength and coordination left hand hand exercise and anybody takes a private lesson with me know if you'll be familiar with these you're like i've seen him talk about these before when we go one-on-one -on -one, um, which you're welcome to do too i do uh do private one-on-one -on -one lessons too as well but this is just a general kind of overview of everything with related to bass and by the way that's what if you're just tuning in that's what we do here every uh, wednesday night we talk anything bass related whether it be pedals techniques, bass lines, whatever the case may be. But this week, we are going to be talking about um, different techniques that I do to keep my left hand strong, coordinated, and being able to do the things that I want to do on bass. Um, you know, bass, um, unlike, say, guitar or some other stringed instruments, you know, it's a pretty hefty instrument. You know, the, the neck's a little bit bigger than a lot of instruments. The strings are definitely thicker than, say, a guitar. So you want to be able to, um, you know, if you're playing, you know, an hour and a half, two hour show, maybe more, maybe a little bit less, you want to be feel confident you're going to be able to play that show, um, you know, get, get around on your fingerboard, obviously play with the same authority in the last 10 minutes as you were in the first 10 minutes of the show. And, uh, and also even recording situations, you know, sometimes those recording situations go for a long, long time and you definitely want to have good hand health. That's one thing I feel really blessed. You know, I played a lot of upright bass growing up and I did, you know, even at a young age while my muscles were still forming as a kid, I did a lot of hand exercises, different, different things and different, um, different, um, things on my fingerboard, um, to, uh, to increase that. And I never I don't think you can ever do enough of that kind of stuff. So I'm going to show you three different exercises that I use um, that maybe you can use on your own that I think, you know, they're good. Just, you know, when you first pick up your bass for the day, take five, ten minutes and just run these. Now, um, you know, run them with a metronome or some kind of timekeeping device is always helpful um, because we're always wanting to get our rhythm better and stronger. But uh, you can do it without too if you're just sitting around with your bass, you know, not plugged in or whatever the case may be. So this first one I do, and if again, if anybody's ever taking a, uh, a bass lesson with me before, you're going to be very familiar with this one. It's usually one of the first ones I show someone when we start, whether it be bass and or guitar lessons. I teach guitar as well, but um, is um, I call it the cycle. Okay, and um, <clears throat> what you're going to do is very very simple exercise. You can do it anywhere on your neck for starting. I like to start down at the first fret on the E string, which is an F, and uh, just because the frets are obviously a little bit bigger here too as well. Um, and what you're going to do is you're going to put your first finger on the F. Pretty easy, right? Second finger on the second fret, F sharp. Third finger on the third fret, G. Fourth fret on the fourth fret, G sharp. It's pretty easy, right? All right. Now, what you're going to do now, you're just going to repeat that over and over and over. The only difference is each time you start over this first cycle, your first finger, index finger, is moving down to the next string. So now I'm on the eighth string. Everything else is on the E string. Then we're moving down to the D string. Everything else stays on the E string. And finally, on the G string. All right. I'm trying to get those notes real nice, 
not a lot of buzz. You know, the transition between notes are very, very strong and smooth, uh, smooth as silk as you move across there. So that's 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 one. Okay, that's cycle one. So I call it the cycle. Cycle two, exact same thing. Start off one, two, three, four on your E string, but this time, every time you start over again, your second or your middle finger is moving to the next string across. Like, just like that. Everything else, including that first finger, are staying on the E string, all right? Then I'm sure you're getting the gist of it now. Next one, it will be your third finger moving. Start over just like you do. Third finger moving, makes that little trip. Now it's going to the D string. And finally to the G string. And then of course, finally we will be going, it will be our pinky making that move. Get nice big long notes. We're not trying to, you know, this is not about a race on this one. This is about holding the string down for a long time. Like even if you could do it, you know, at a faster tempo, you don't want to do that because that's like going to the gym and lifting weights like this. You know, when you lift weights, you lift them like this to gain that strength. And that's kind of the same thing we're doing with our fingers there, okay? Exercise one, the cycle, all right? Exercise two is where you're kind of just doing parallel fifths all the way across. So we're starting up here. I always start on the ninth fret, you know, the last single dot before the double dot. You go nine with your index finger, then you're gonna to go to 11 on your, which is, you know, one below the double dot on your D string, a C sharp, and then go up two more frets to uh, your uh, G sharp on your, um, you know, the 13th fret on your G string. So you got, Right? Then we're just going to do the exact same thing. We're just going to move it back a string to 9 on the E, 11 on the A, to D. So you got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Almost kind of like a triplet -y feel. Triplet. Okay, all the way across. Then we're just going to move down two frets. And obviously as we go down, the frets are going to get bigger or wider. 9, or excuse me, 7 to 7A, nine, 9D, nine 11G, back to 7E, 9A, 11D. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. All right, move down to the fifth fret. Again, these frets are getting wider. You're going to have more of a stretch. 5 to 7 to 9, 5 on the E string, 7A string, 9. And then finally, this is the big one. Again, you're just going down every two frets. Just go down the dots. Nine, seven, five, and then three. Three to five to G. And you can see I'm kind of using that middle finger almost as like as a pivot point. You know, I'm kind of pivoting across like that. All right, then we got three, five, and seven. All right, so if you did the whole thing without any stops, you might, you're gonna have something like this. little sounding little piece too as well now one other thing you can do and this is one of my old bass teachers taught me this on any of these finger exercises whether it be the cycle or this one this parallel fifth one kind of thing i'm doing try pulling your thumb away from the back of the neck okay so you're gonna be playing you know, i'm gonna try to get this angle in here so you can see this like my thumb's not touching my neck see that and I'm trying to get my thumb up there you can see it on camera yeah my thumb is not touching the back of the neck like that all the way Oops, this is probably a better angle now you're never really gonna play like that of course but what it does it kind of gives you a false handicap almost like a baseball player before they go up to bat warming up with two bats and then when they get up to bat of course they get rid of the one or they have a donut on the back they get rid of the donut and then when then they it's so much easier to, to hit same thing with us we bring our thumb back in it makes it super e super easy to play like that too okay so that's uh that's exercise two or you know strengthening exercise number two so we got the cycle we got this one and the last one i have is this is a cool little lick this is a um uh one i've been uh this is just this like trippy little almost like hypnotic lick that um uh, my old friend uh rob hamrick who i used to play in a band with when i was like a young kid um the um 
he um, would, um, he had this little lick he would do sometimes and I'll mimic it on bass. And, um, uh, sorry, I get my computer up there. And he would, um, and this is kind of like the lick right here. And it's, it's always stuck with me and it's a great, it was like kind of more of a song thing we were doing, but this was like always, I thought it was a great finger exercise. Let me play it for you first. It goes like this. I did is I kind of thought of well let's start there and do it in different positions down the neck and bring it down So, um, let me show you what the exercise is. I'm going to show you something really crazy you can do with it once you did it. So, the, the notes are pretty easy. You're playing open E, 10, 12 on the E string. So, D to E. Then you're going to G sharp with your middle finger on the A. So, 0, 10, 12, E, 11, A, 10 on the D, C, back to 11 on the uh, A, to 12 on the D. Like that. And you're doing it without any stops. Always hitting that open note. I just do four in a row. Then we're going to go down and do the same thing, but we'll go zero, always the open E, five, seven, or excuse me, seven, nine. Yes, yeah, seven, nine on the E. Eight, A, seven, back to seven D, eight A, back to nine D. Four times. Then we're going to go down to five, seven on the E, zero, five, seven, six, back here. So zero, five, seven, six, A, five, D, six, A, back to seven, D. Four of those. And then finally, this is the big stretcher, zero, three, five on the E, four on the A, three on the D, back to four on the A, five on the D. The kicker is what you're going to do is here, you can see I'm playing it with my first finger to my third, then middle, like that, okay? So what we're going to do, we're going to do it without using our index finger at all, okay? So you're going to go from 0, 10, 12, and that'll be from your middle to your pinky, to your ring finger on your 11th fret on your G string, or sorry, your A string, to 10 on the D with your middle, back to 10 on the A, or 11 on the A with your ring finger, and pinky on there. So. We'll do the exact same movement. You see, I'm never using my index finger, and then we'll just work our way down the frets. And believe me, this feels bizarre when you first play it the first time. Especially when you get down here. It's like, what is going on? That's that all the way across yeah so so yeah you really get that strength and uh you know because our index fingers are always naturally you know when you first start playing guitar or bass first thing you do what do you do you know you one finger everything when you do that so this this we have a big advantage with this one but what we want to do is we want to get the the strength happening in every one of these appendages on your fingers so there are three great exercises or i hope hope they're great exercises they're great for me hopefully they'll be great for you the cycle uh, which we did the parallel fifth one and then we got this kind of dream sequence kind of sound of bass line which is a good one too all right so thanks for being here with me wednesday night remember this saturday night uh, i want to play us out i was like playing a little out of here so we'll play out and one more time and uh thanks for being here with me on bass talk we'll be here next wednesday too let's do a little bit more playing a little bit of one two three
right, uh, everybody, have a, everybody have a great week. I will see you Saturday night, Saturday night chit chat. Ben Carey from Pigeons Playing Ping Pong. And we'll see you soon on Base Talk. Thanks for hanging out with me tonight. Love y'all. Bye.